Hello, my name is Aaron Clark. I'm an executive committee member with the R Validation Hub. I'm here today to talk to you about the risk assessment application, which is used for R package validation. So the name of the game is validating open source software. And this has been an ongoing effort with the R Validation Hub, which if you're unfamiliar is a consortium of about 50 or so pharma and biotech companies. Uh, we have a centralized goal to build a framework to help validate R and certain R packages um, in the short term and in the long term uh, with an eye to all open source languages. If you're interested in learning more, I uh, highly recommend checking out the pharmar.org site um, and you can see all the different work streams that we have going on and especially if you want to get involved. The main goal is going to be ensuring that we're able to provide some documentation uh, that meets the expectation of regulatory agencies in regards to uh, validation of that software. We've designed two tools to help folks do this. The first being the risk metric package. This helps users quantify risk programmatically. The latter being the risk assessment package, which is also a full-fledged Shiny app designed to be used within an organization to quantify those risks and make decisions within your validated software environments. So what do they do? Risk metric is a framework to quantify an R package's risk. It's going to do this by assessing several meaningful metrics designed to evaluate package best practices, code documentation, community engagement, and development sustainability. The risk assessment application is built upon the Golem framework and it augments the utility of risk metric. The application's goal is to provide a central hub for an organization to review and assess risk of R packages. We provide a lot of handy tools and guide rails along the way to make that easier. Sometimes quality is measurable and that's exactly what risk metric seeks to do. Software development best practices dictate that an R package should probably have some of the following. A software license, source code available for browsing, an easy way to contact the maintainer, up-to-date news, a place to report bugs, evidence that bugs are actually being squashed, lots of documentation for the package itself and also each function, adequate test coverage, and so much more. So why create a Shiny app around this process? Well, the app actually does extend the ability and functionality that Riskmetric provides, and that's by honing it into an organizational context. This is going to empower reviewers to do a number of things, and that is to analyze the Riskmetric output without the need to write a single lick of R code. Second of all, uh, it'll also uh, make sure that risk metric is going to be run in the same exact environment every time you're assessing a package because the way that risk metric calculates scores is going to depend on the context in which uh, certain R packages were originally installed on that machine. So if you have two different laptops, two different environments, they could produce uh, two different uh, package risk scores. So that this is going to alleviate that uh, source spot. It's also going to facilitate and store communication between users. So you can store these comments at the package level and even the metric level. It's going to allow users to automatically categorize their packages into certain decision levels. So you can either make a decision that, hey, this is a really low risk package or a really high risk package. We even give you the ability to specify if there's like a medium or moderate risk as well. You can also do this in a more manual manner. Uh, if you were to sort of subjectively analyze the data and make a decision on your own, or you can also leverage the consensus of other users of the application. Uh, you're going to be able to generate some nice looking reports that you can send to your boss or to other members of your organization that includes the risk score, all the metric outputs, uh, reviewer comments, and more. It's also going to provide a log of the assessments that were done, which is a super handy tool because everything gets stored into a database for future viewing or historical backup. And last but not least, uh, it's going to provide a 
uh, level of authentication and roles within the application. So this is going to help users complete certain tasks that you don't want everyone to complete, um, such as org level metric weighting. Whenever we think about validating open source software, we try to frame our minds around there being uh, several layers to the process. And each layer is kind of like a slice of Swiss cheese. If you were to look at just you know, one layer, you'd see that, you know, there's probably a lot of holes in that approach, just validating, you know, the, the quality of an R package, you know, there, it's still not going to take into consideration like the statistical procedures that the R package uh, leverages. And, and that's very true. But um, as you start to layer in more and more um, validation approaches, you know, maybe you have another workflow or process that does uh, look at the statistical procedure that's being performed. And you can see that the holes slowly start to get covered up one by one until there's very few holes that actually shine through. And eventually there'll be no holes in your validation process once the entire workflow is complete. So we just hope that risk metric and risk assessment can help provide at least one layer of Swiss cheese in your validation process. Before I dive into the demo on ShinyApps.io, I did want to provide you with a few links that I think you'll find useful. First, the link to the demo application. Uh, like I said, it's deployed right now on ShinyApps.io, so you can go and use it. Uh, but you can type in bit.ly slash RAA underscore demo. Of course, that is going to mean risk assessment application. The next link is uh, surrounding a number of GitHub resources. So first of all, our GitHub is RAA underscore GH. If you want to check out our documentation site, we have lots of documents out there for both users and potential new developers who want to join this work stream. Uh, you can type in RAA underscore GH or RAA underscore docs. I've recently created a Google form that will help us track and monitor how our users are interacting with the application and with risk metric. So if you are one of those people who are actually using these tools, I'd love to hear from you sometime. Please, please, please fill out this survey and it'll help us understand and create a consensus on how a lot of companies are sort of using the metric weights or using certain package risk score thresholds to make their decisions for their GXP environments. So that link is going to be bit.ly slash RAA underscore survey. And last but not least, please go out and check uh, pharmaR.org. Like I said, that's a site for the R Validation Hub, and there's lots of work streams similar to this one if you're interested in this type of work and getting involved. I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that this is not the work of one person by any means. This is uh, the effort of a large development team uh, that I've had the privilege to work with. Myself, Aaron, we also have Robert, Jeff, and Andrew on the top row there, Lars, Imran, and Scott on the bottom row. So thank you guys so much for your uh, contributions to the project. All right, now let's head over to a browser so we can begin our demonstration and check out a few other resources. All right, so to start things off, this is our GitHub page. If you scroll to the bottom, you can see the readme is populated with lots of content, including information on how to install this package. If we head on over to our documentation site, um, you can see that there is similar information, including a nice getting started vignette that shows you all about your first time using the application. And there's even an article on admin tools and options. More articles coming soon. This is the survey that I mentioned regarding um, users who are actually using risk metric or risk assessment. We would love some feedback from you guys. So it's a very simple survey. You can fill some things out so we can learn more from you and your experience with these tools. And last but not least, here is the risk assessment application. The first thing that you're going to be met with is the authentication screen. Remember I said that it's important that we have roles defined in the application so certain uh, users can do certain things. And so in order to do that, we need authentication. So note if it's your first time logging in, there's some instructions for you on the bottom. You're going to want to log in with a, a username admin and the password QWERTY1. And both of those are going to be in all caps. So I've actually prepared a username for myself already, and so I'm going to log in using that. 
Welcome to the application. The first thing that you're going to notice is that there are four main tabs at the top. Uh, the first of which being the risk assessment tab, which is where we'll spend most of our time. Uh, but I just wanted to quickly point you to the assessment criteria tab. This is really nice because it, it shows you each of the metrics tracked by risk metric. and also gives you like sort of what kind of measure it is. Is it a percentage? Is it a yes, no? And, and the reason for inclusion in the application. Uh, it also shows uh, the risk calculation, talks a little bit about how that is calculated, and then it also shows the current weights that your admin is set for your organization. Over here you can see we have a package control panel and this is where you can select packages that already exist in the database. So if I want to choose uh, something from the Pharmaverse like Admiral, you can see it has an overall risk of 0.45. And this was the overall risk at the time that the database was created. You can see that we have made a decision saying that that is a medium risk package. And you can see that this was applied automatically. And what I mean by automatically is we have a set of um, decision automation tools here to the left. And so this will allow you to basically create buckets for uh, packages solely based off of their risk scores. So here we have a bucket from 0 to 0.33, from 0.33 to 0.66, and 0.66 or higher is considered high risk. Um, if you want to change those rules, you can certainly do that as well. Like if you want to get rid of them altogether, um, you can do that as well, but you need to click submit. So these rules only apply to packages that are uploaded after the rules have been changed. Um, so if you want to reset the rules for your packages, um, you'll have to re-upload them with the rules in place. So uh, if I wanted to go and search for a new package though, I can do that by just clicking in this type package names uh, selector. And this will actually give you all the packages that exist in CRAN, which is, I forget what it's at, you know, maybe 18,000 to 20,000, somewhere in there. Uh, but let's say you want to look up like some text, uh, text mining or something like that. So yeah, here's a package called text miner. You can click on that and it'll automatically upload that to the database. Uh, admins have the ability to remove packages from the database. Or if you want to upload a large amount of files at once, you can browse for a CSV file on your computer. And I would highly recommend uh, just looking at the sample data set. It just has a number of packages and a column for versions. You can download that if you uh, want to just use the templates and, and populate it with your own packages. That's totally fine. Okay, so now that we're ready to sort of analyze these packages, maybe we'll go back to the tidyverse. Um, you can see all the maintenance metrics that exist here. For example, um, does the package have vignettes? Yes, it has at least two on file um, on CRAN. Uh, it has a URL to report bugs, it has a URL for source control, uh, it has a news file, the news file is up to date, it has a, a dedicated website to the, for the package, um, the, the maintainer is listed here, it has a bug closure rate of above 90% in the last, at least out of the last 30 bugs that were opened, and then it also has a, a license on file. So those are kind of all your maintenance metrics. Over here is the Community Usage Metrics tab, and this uh, really just uh, reports on the number of downloads in the last 12 months. Uh, it does provide some additional info, like when the first, the first version was released and also when the latest version was released. So here you can see uh, really a, a long time period here uh, since this package has existed, and you can kind of scroll through it if you want to look up more details. So for example here you can see that there's a lot of downloads that happened in October of 2018 and remember I talked about that feature to comment. Um, you can add your comments as you so please here. So I'll just write something very briefly. Um, uh, wow there seems to be a lot of downloads around October 2018. And uh, package downloads tend to generally increase over time. So I'll click submit and then my comment will show up down below and with the timestamp and also my role and also my username. 
So that is the community usage metrics. And then at the end, there's this re review of the report. So that contains all the information you'd want to know about the tidyverse, the description for the tidyverse, the author, maintainer, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> it has the overall risk. We said it was a low risk package um, and it uh, has an overall comment. And then it also has my comment that I just made. It also has information about the risk assessment app and the risk metric version and the time and the weights that this report was based off of. So with all those things in mind, you can go ahead and just download the report in HTML or Word or PDF, either any of those will work just fine. And you can open it and share it with your colleagues um, or with your boss or whoever uh, needs to see those reports. Okay, heading over just briefly to the database tab, you can kind of see a high level view of all the packages that have been assessed already. And you can see here there's a few that haven't, including one uh, called Tidy Seed, or sorry, called Test That. Um, we'll test that and tidy seeds both haven't been reviewed. So off the bat, if you don't want to explore, you know, these metrics in the app, you could simply just download the report and that'll be helpful for you um, to review at a later date. That actually, since I did more than one report, it's going to put that in a zip file for me. And last but not least, there's an admins tool tab. So this is where you can actually sort of <clears throat> edit existing users um, or, um, add new users and reset passwords and things like that. But in addition to managing credentials, you also have the ability to set weights for a package. So here maybe you could say, uh, instead of having a weight of you know one, I wanna update this to be a weight of two. News file is extremely important to me. Um, so I'm gonna update that to three. And then I really am keen on the bug status. I'm gonna up that to three as well and then the number of downloads in the last year is paramount. So I'm gonna put that up at a number five. And so once that exists, you can click, uh, sorry, once the changes exist, you can click uh, download database to just store a copy of the database for backup purposes. And then you can also click recalculate. And so if you click this, it's gonna ask you to confirm your decision because once you do it, it's actually going to recalculate the risk score for each package in the database based off of these new weights. So I'm not gonna do that today, um, but that is a capability that exists. Okay, so that in essence is the risk assessment application. Hi everyone, I just wanna end my presentation with this slide again and encourage you all to connect in some way. So be sure to uh, check out the demo app if you haven't been able to use it yourself yet. Uh, the link is there. Reach out to us on GitHub, file an issue if you find a bug or something wrong or you have, want to propose like a new feature for the application or for risk metric too. Uh, please, if you're a user uh, of the risk assessment app, please, please, please fill out the survey. Tell us how you're using it, how your organization is using it so we can develop some sort of consensus on how we are all approaching this, this tricky problem of validation of our packages for uh, validated environments. And then last but not least, reach out uh, to us on pharmar.org. There are lots and lots of substreams um, and work going on, all working towards a unified goal of um, bringing the industry closer and closer to uh, using open source software in uh, the pharmaceutical industry. So thanks again for your time. My name is Aaron Clark, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Bye-bye.